pretty funny dude. Now, let's discuss, and we have a, uh, a guest coming up in five minutes, but let's take a couple of three or four minutes here on Angel Reese. I spoke with somebody that covers LSU earlier today. He called me and said that uh, she is taking hell down uh, in the uh, Baton Rouge area, even from the local media, for trying to play the victim. Uh, a lot of people, she went on in the post press conference along with her teammates defending her and what she's been through. It, 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 they lost. We don't know how she would have reacted had they beaten Iowa again. We've seen her react when they've won other games too. I don't think when you are out there and you are braggadocious and you are full throttle and you are look at me, look at me, this is who I am, and you talk some trash when you are beaten, you know what? There's kind of a reality check. Uh, some people have no problem with it. Maybe it's good because men's basketball, there's trash talkers. But Angel Reese last night in the press conference was in tears, started talking about how she's been the victim. I, Mike called me. I didn't ask him and said that a lot of people thought that that was not the way to go at that particular moment after they were beaten by Iowa last night in the Elite Eight. No, it was not. Uh, and, again, you have to – uh, the best trash talkers are the ones that when it gets thrown back at them, they're like, okay, well, I'll see you next time. Like, it's okay. This is one. This is one. I think that's probably what happened with Caitlin Clark last year after yeah. the LSU like, game. And that's yeah. what, when they had, like, they had that fake controversy between the two of them where, mm -hmm. like, oh, it was, no, it was just, like, have you ever, anybody ever played basketball just in the gym before at the Y? There's trash talk. The good trash talkers are the ones that are like, all right, you got me now, but I'll see you next time. And that's... And look, for Angel Reese at LSU, there may not be a next time. She might be going to the WNBA. We don't know. Um, she has, you know, a, a few days to make that decision. Like, but less than, like two, less than another day and a half. Yeah, yeah. so she's got a couple days to make that decision so she can she can maybe move on. So maybe there's not there's definitely not a next time playing Caitlin Clark in college because Caitlin Clark is leaving. So, you know, you have that. Look, they split against each other. Just take it and, and roll. I think that uh, letting the emotions get the better of her and, again, playing the victim. Look, not diminishing any bad things that you've heard, but when you when you open the door for things, you have to be ready for things. Well, yeah, and I, I'm an old white guy. I don't want to talk too much about Angel Reese yeah. and, like, you know, my feelings on it because I know she doesn't care, and I know most of the people who are fans of Angel Reese do not care what I have to say about it. But uh, I do think that LSU's got an opportunity. If she were to run it back, Flage Johnson's coming back, yep. Haley Van Lith, I bet, would come back as well because she wants to play for Mulkey for a second year. I mean, they can basically run it back uh, with their, their stars and then add recruits and be really really good next year but yeah I, I think that there is a, a certain element of of that press conference where you know Flage Johnson got really defensive over Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith did as well and Angel Reese obviously was was talking about how she's been bullied and and people have talked trash and all these things and and I think it does go both ways I do think she was on the losing end and so she's under this microscope of, of maybe playing the victim a little bit uh, more um, but you know there's also the reality of that that's how it is and, and I think the the biggest takeaway for me is it was almost like they were trying to like talk to the reporters of the audience but they were talking about social media yes they were like they were talking about people being mean on social media so like that's just that's you don't have to be Angel Reese to get picked on on social media so I think that's just kind of a disturbing thing to me is um, maybe disturbing is too, too strong of a word but that's the thing is they were caught up in what social media was saying and treating that as though it was like the whole world's against them. And I just don't think that's very healthy. I, I don't think that's good for us in the long term. And I don't think it's good that that's where their heads are at in some ways is like the world's against us because, you know, Papa Doc 43 on, on Twitter is, is saying that he hates it. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Like, it's, no, I you're, you're complaining. And I got to give Kim credit because that's what kind of she pointed yeah, to that, Yeah, I think too. she did. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're talking, and you think they're – are they talking about the Washington Post? No. Are they talking about the L.A. Times? No, they're talking about social media. So who is that? It's just nameless, faceless, whoever out there that's, uh, you know, calling – you names are bullying you. So I do think that needs to be taken into account as far as her comments go. And just the only other thing is, is one line she said that I just hope um, young people are, are kind of mindful of when they with talk about this um, is I'm going to be unapologetically me. Yes. I do think there's great value in that. And I think that there is something to that, depending on what interpretation you have of that. I think you, you should be yourself, but you should always be open to change. And I just worry that when you say unapologetically me, that that 
maybe that young person who's watching that thinks that that means that you just do whatever you want, no matter what gets in your way or who gets in your way, and you don't apologize because you're just going to be you, no matter who you run over. Does that make sense? Yep. And so I just hope that that phrase, when it's applied for people, is not just taken as... Uh, I'm just going to do me no matter what. It's no, you're going to be who you are and you're not going to apologize for that. But that doesn't mean you just, you know, walk over whoever and, and leave them in your wake. So um, just when I hear that phrase, I just seen that applied a lot. And I hope that people who say that, and I'm sure Angel Reese does, uh, really look into the, the meaning behind what that's supposed to mean and not just, I'm going to do whatever I want at, yeah, the, at the cost of whoever, you know. It's one thing to say you're going to be who you are, but if you're going to be who you are, there are going to be people, when you get more exposure, right. there's going to be more scrutiny that comes with it, whether it's fair or not, and that itself is debatable. When we come back,